Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at the new Intel Compute Stick. This is a full Windows computer on a stick that you can just plug into the back of your TV or monitor and run Windows applications. And this one is made by Intel, who also happens to make the processor that is located inside of this. This is powered by an Atom Cherry Trail processor. It's kind of a low-powered chip that we see uh, in a lot of low-cost PCs. And this one is also uh, definitely a low-cost PC at around $150 or so. So we'll be taking a, a close look at how it performs in this video. I'll probably be doing a second video in a couple of days where we look at loading alternative operating systems beyond Windows on this too, so we can see what else you can run with it. Uh, but very capable little computers. They're very lightweight. You can wear it around your neck or something. They even have a lanyard uh, post in here so you can hang, hang it on a little lanyard if you want. So pretty amazing uh, that we're seeing so many of these out in the marketplace. And now this is already the second generation of these uh, little PCs on a stick. Now I should say in the interest of the full disclosure that uh, nobody is paying for this review. I bought this with my own funds, about $150. I have no relationship with Intel beyond being their customer. And I am the only one who's going to see this video before it is posted. These are my standard uh, disclaimers that I do before every video. You can learn more about my policies related to brand relationships in the description down below. So let's take a look at the hardware. It does feel a little bit thinner and lighter than last year. And you'll notice too that they added an extra USB port. So you get USB 3.0, USB 2.0. Your power goes in here. And uh, you should be careful though about what you plug into these two ports because you don't have a lot of juice going in. Uh, you got about three amps at five volts. So it's basically USB voltage. Uh, so if you have a hard drive or something that might draw more power, you might want to get a USB hub that will power that device for you. Uh, so all you're doing is passing data through these ports. But things like memory sticks, keyboards, and mice uh, should be fine on here. And it's nice that there are two ports. So if you have a wired keyboard and mouse, you can plug both of those in and you shouldn't have any issues with that. Your power button is here. On the front is your HDMI plug. So you can just take this and stick it in the side of your TV. If it doesn't fit back there, they do give you a tiny extension cable so you can uh, position it in a more uh, flexible way if you need to. So you have that option available to you. On this side, there isn't much else except a uh, SD card, a micro SD card slot over there. And then you've got holes here for uh, the lanyard that you might want to attach to it so you can wear your computer around your neck as you're walking around. It really feels very thin and light as compared to last year's. It's powered by an Intel Atom X5Z8300 processor. Again, that's a Cherry Trail Atom chip. Uh, there is a fan built in, so it will keep itself cool. Now, I want you to compare, uh, when we go and look at our benchmarks in a minute, uh, this to the Kangaroo Mini PC that we looked at quite a few times here on the channel. This one is powered by a Z8500 X5 chip. So this is 8300, this is 8500. The big difference here is that this one runs a little bit faster than uh, the more expensive compute stick does, but the kangaroo is bigger. So if you want something small that you can just stick in the back of a television, uh, the stick will certainly do it for you. But if you want something faster and don't want to spend 150 bucks, uh, you can get a faster computer for $99 with this one. So uh, definitely something worth considering. And I would suggest checking out my review of this uh, if you are interested in learning more. Two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal storage. They added wireless AC. So we'll see how that performs with some of our uh, movie watching in a few minutes. And it also has Bluetooth 4.0. And now what we're going to do is hook it up and get everything booted up. One thing to note is that it comes with 32-bit windows, not 64-bit windows like we're seeing on a lot of other Atom Cherry Trail based devices. Not a big deal because it only has two gigabytes of RAM and moving to 64-bit windows really just helps you access more memory. But I know some of you run applications that are 64-bit specific, so those will not run on here uh, with the version of Windows that's installed. Uh, we are going to take a look when we do our other operating system video to see if we can boot 64-bit windows on here. But uh, uh, just know out of the box, it is running 32-bit Windows. All right, so let's see how fast this thing can boot up. We'll power it up here. You get a nice little power light there to indicate its status. One of the things that I really like is they give you all the F commands right at the splash screen here for all the things you might want to do uh, when you turn it on, such as the BIOS and other things. We'll look again at the BIOS uh, when we do our uh, alternative operating system video in a couple of days. But as you can see, we are already booted up on Windows here. Now, I know people are going to ask me, because they do all the time, what keyboard am I using? This is the Logitech K830. I bought this and reviewed it a couple of months ago, and I love this thing because it's backlit, it's got the integrated trackpad, and what's cool is that you can use it with its little USB dongle, or it'll work via Bluetooth. So very flexible and great for these little mini PCs. Uh, no, no advertisement here. I just legitimately love this keyboard. It's made my life so much easier on the channel because I don't have to hunt around for stuff. All integrated, and it works really well, uh, either USB or Bluetooth. So let's take a look at the web browsing performance.
performance of our compute stick uh, using my integrated trackpad here so we can see how it performs. So we'll go to my uh, YouTube channel here and see how fast everything comes up on screen. So uh, it does perform pretty well as you can see. It gets uh, the page rendered relatively quickly here. We'll wait for the video to pop in. It is a little bit slower than what you might see on that Kangaroo PC because it is running a slightly slower version uh, of that Atom processor with less memory bandwidth also. So those two things will uh, make this kind of activity a little bit less high performing, but uh, it does seem to do all the things that uh, we would expect a mini PC to do, especially in kind of a home theater environment. Uh, so you can see here our YouTube video is playing just fine. Uh, I don't think we're getting any drop frames here. Let me pull up the stats for nerds and see. Uh, so nope, not dropping any frames at 1080p. It's working fine there. And it's also able to handle 4K video just fine. This is a 4K file that it is essentially down converting to the window size that we're working with here. But uh, if we had an issue, we would be seeing drop frames and uh, stuttering going on here. We're not seeing that with this video. I also found that 1080p 60 video also worked fine on here, provided you're using the Edge browser versus Chrome. A whole big story behind why Chrome doesn't work as well as Edge does with that kind of stuff, but uh, it'll be fine for playing back video. Uh, at the moment though, stick to Edge uh, if you want the best performance. Now in the Octane benchmark test, which measures how well it can render HTML and process JavaScript, uh, we get a score of 6,703. And what's interesting is that that score is only a little bit higher than last year's model running with the prior generation processor. And what's even more interesting is that we get significantly better performance out of the Kangaroo Mini PC, which is running a, a faster variant of the same chip with a little bit more memory bandwidth available to it. So that one comes in at a score of 8,085. So a significant performance difference uh, between that $99 PC and this $150 PC on a stick. Now this is a full Windows PC, so you can run things like Microsoft Word and other productivity applications. We'll pop open our usual newsletter template, which is very involved and complex with graphics and text and everything. And as you can see here, it does render pretty quickly. Uh, you can move things around and resize images and have the text reflow, and you're not gonna have too much lag in doing that kind of stuff. So for doing basic office kinds of tasks, this should do uh, just fine. I do think the Kangaroo performs a little bit faster with this kind of exercise, but uh, for what most people might wanna do, just some basic word processing this will perform just fine. Now these mini PCs are not great for gaming, but you can run casual games and uh, some stuff like Minecraft here. I am running the original version of Minecraft right now. Uh, the performance isn't too bad. It was raining in my world earlier, which was impacting performance, but we are seeing frame rates around uh, 30 to 40 frames per second when it's not raining. Uh, so about 20 or so when it is. Uh, so that might give you an idea of what impact weather will have on your performance here, but uh, not bad. A little bit better than last year's PC. Uh, pretty much in line, maybe a little bit slower than that Kang Kangaroo PC was running at. Uh, you will get better performance out of the Windows 10 version of Minecraft, which is a little bit better optimized, but most people run this version of it. Now in modern games, we like to take a look at the 3D Mark CloudGate test to get a feel for what it can do with something more demanding like a Rocket League or something similar. And we get a score of 1,587, which uh, doesn't really fare all that well, as you can see from the frame rates there. Uh, the Kangaroo PC does a little bit better, but uh, not great. And if we look at the Lenovo Idea Center stick, we get a score of about 980. So it is faster than uh, where the compute stick was a year ago. I wasn't testing CloudGate on these devices when I looked at the compute stick last time, but that Lenovo PC on a stick is pretty much the same performance uh, as we would have seen out of that. It's the same chip as the original compute stick was. So we are getting better on the gaming, but uh, still nowhere near the point where you can run uh, some of the more modern games. So you're better off getting like an Xbox or a PS4 or something if you really want to do some gaming. But casual games uh, should do just fine. But you can do some media watching on this, and we're going to put it through the test of Kodi uh, with some high-end video formats. All right, so we've got Kodi loaded up here. I'm going to load up my Blu-ray MKVs down in the basement. I have these uh, high bitrate Blu-ray files uh, stored on a disk array downstairs. We're going to stream it upstairs via wireless AC to our compute stick here and see how it does. And it seems to be uh, spinning up very quickly here. Things are working just fine. I have noticed a few drop frames here or there, and that is due to the wireless, not to the hardware. So I did plug in an Ethernet to USB device earlier. I didn't have any drop frames, but I am getting a few here and there uh, on this one, primarily because I'm in a different room than I have been in the past. So I may need to bring an access point into this room to get a little bit better wireless signal uh, here. And that really, uh, really stresses the importance of having good networking connectivity if you want to stream files over your network, especially big ones like these uh, Blu-ray files are concerned. So uh, hooking up a USB to Ethernet adapter is always the best way to go, uh, or locating a wireless AC access point into your room that you're in 
uh, to get the best performance, but it does seem to be working pretty well, and I think it, uh, as a multimedia device, should do uh, just fine. Now, what I'm going to do now also, though, is look at uh, the HD Home Run add-on for Kodi, which lets us watch live television from my HD Home Run device, which I also have in the basement. So we'll go over to our add-on here, and we'll click on the HD Home Run, and that, what that'll do is connect up with that HD Home Run and tune some live television off my cable system here. So you can see we're uh, running some commercials right now. The frame rate looks just fine. I can go ahead and and click on my uh, channel guide here and switch to another station and we'll let that spin up as well. Uh, so it does do pretty well for uh, watching live television in high definition. So this will do well as other compute sticks have at playing back multimedia in your home. So that is the Intel Compute Stick for 2016. It is incrementally faster than last year's version, uh, which is running with the older Atom chip, but I still think the Kangaroo Mini PC is the best value for uh, this kind of computer because this is $50 less and it's faster. So $99 versus $150. Both come with the Windows license. Uh, this is just a better performing computer for less money, but it's bigger. So if you want something you can wear around your neck or uh, pop into the side of your TV or monitor, uh, this one will certainly do it for you. But if you want the best value, I still think the Kangaroo, uh, also with the Atom Cherry Trail processor, but a faster version of it, uh, is the better deal. Now stay tuned though, because we're going to uh, do some things like installing some alternative operating systems onto this. So we're going to look at uh, trying to get Remix OS, which is an Android operating system running on here as well as some uh, Linux variants. So we'll be taking a look at that in a future video. And I also hope to get in a Core M version of this device because those are going to be significantly faster uh, yet in the same form factor. I'm very eager to try one of those out too. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.